sorry it's reversed. Um, my computer does it. I guess I'm on the other side of the looking glass. Let's see, where was I? Oh, that's right. Jesus was dead. All right. So after that, uh, chapter 27, 28, last two chapters of Matthew. The next day, that is the preparation day, was over. The chief priests and Pharisees went in a body to Pilate and said to him, Your Excellency, we, rec we recall that this impostor said while he was still alive, After three days I shall rise again. Therefore, give the order to have the sepulchre kept secure until the third day, for fear his disciples come and steal him away and tell the people he is risen from the dead. This late, this last piece of fraud was worse, worse than what went before. And you know, Pilate agreed with that. It doesn't make any sense that he would bother, but had a seal put on the, you know, stone rolled in front of the grave and seal put on there. This is the only place you see guards mentioned. Of course, Matthew was said to be a lawyer. I don't know if this is true. He's crafty, and he's filling in holes in advance. No one else thought to do this, though, because there are no guards anywhere else. A lot of other things aren't there either. <clears throat> After the Sabbath, and towards the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdala and the other Mary went to visit the sepulchre, and suddenly there was a violent earthquake that appears nowhere else. For an angel of the Lord descending from heaven, came and rolled away the stone and sat on it. That's unique too. His face was like lightning. His robe was white as snow. The guards were so shaken by fear of him that they were like dead men. But the angel spoke, and he said to the women, There is no need to be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said he would. A lot of short memories. Come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell the disciples, He is risen from the dead, and now he is going ahead of you to Galilee. That is where you will see him again. Look, I have told you. And they, you know, the women, the two women, having heard the message of the one angel, ran to tell the disciples. And before they got to meet the disciples, chapter 9, and suddenly coming to meet them was Jesus. Kind of seems unnecessary. The angel told them everything they needed to hear, hear didn't he? He said he'd See him, they'd see him in Galilee. They're still in Jerusalem. <sighs> Greetings, he said. And the women came to him, and clasping his feet, feet, they did him homage. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers that they must leave for Galilee. There they will see me. It's kind of pointless. I mean, why send the angel then? I mean, he rolls a stone away, but the grave's already empty. I mean, what, Jesus turned into steam and went... Then why roll the stone away? Just so the women could go in and look? I mean, it's so theatric, but not very realistic if you really think about it. Oh, well. Let's look at Mark 16, the final chapter. When the Sabbath was over, Mary of Magdala, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices to anoint him. Salome. All right, now we have an extra woman named Salome, not just the two Marys. All right, well. They were saying to each other, who will roll the stone away for us? For the entrance, um, stone away from the entrance of the tomb. But then they looked and saw the stone, which was very big, had already been rolled back. On entering the tomb, they saw a young man in white robe, seated at the right-hand side, 
see it on the right hand side of something um, and they were struck with amazement and he basically told them you know get out of Jerusalem you know get out of Jerusalem go back to Galilee and then the women don't run and tell the women the guy the disciples they wait a whole day and then tell them and whatever um, the whole point is the message of Matthew and Mark is time to get out of town it's unfriendly here now we're in Luke the final chapters chapter 24 all right now we have Mary of Magdala Joanna and Mary the mother of James so there's no Salome and now there's a Joanna. All right, you know the apologists can probably split some hairs and do a few backflips, but they can't seem to get their st numbers straight here. They can't seem to get anything straight. Uh, as they stood puzzled about the fact that the stone was already moved and there was no guards, so there's only guards in Matthew. They stood there puzzled about this. Two men in brilliant clothes suddenly appeared at their side. Terrified, the women bowed their heads to the ground. But the two said to them, Why look among the dead for someone who is alive? Anyway, you know, and Jesus is meeting people uh, on the road and having dinner with people. And, and he spends, a, according to the book of Acts, he spends an extra 40 days just hanging out. You know, before they, before he had to go to heaven. Let's see. A lot of people were unable to recognize. I'm going to go into this more later. All right, John, uh, the final chapter, twenty. Uh, on the first day, wait. It was very early on the first day of the week, and still dark. So before it was at the crack of dawn. Now it's at dark still. When Mary Magdala came to the tomb. So now it's Mary Magdala, and she's by herself. You don't see a problem with this. <sighs> and she runs, she goes and tells the disciple, and Peter and the beloved one race to check out the tomb. They find a shroud and a face cloth. And they're puzzled about it, and they still didn't understand everything Jesus had said. And they go back home. Just to hurry this up. But Mary was standing outside near, near the tomb, weeping. Then as she wept, she stooped and looked inside and saw two angels in white sitting there, sitting where the body of Jesus had been, one at the head, one at the feet. They said to, uh, they said, Woman, why are you weeping? They have taken my Lord away, she replied, and I don't know where they put him. As she said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, though he did, though she did not realize that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? I can almost imagine him chuckling. Supposing him to be the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have taken him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will go and remove him. Jesus said, Mary? Really? She turned around and then turned around then and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means master. <sighs> you don't see a problem with this, that this story isn't very unified. I mean, yeah, it's got all the basic elements, but God in a court of law? If that were a defendant, uh, you know, faith is a whole new standard. Anyway, I, I'm not done with this. I just wanted to show this, and then I'll get on to the conspiracy theory. Ciao for now.